Hi, my name is Jim Moyle and here to talk to you today a little bit about PESTA and infrastructure testing. Now we've taken Carl Webster's original PVS script and we have modified it. So let's have a quick look at the modified script. So instead of just outputting a document, I've modified this PVS script to also uh, output an object. Uh, the object should be whatever is in the documentation scripts as well. All right, so if we uh, run the uh, script, and let's just copy here. You see we're running the script uh, verbosely and uh, hopefully we should have an object in our O variable, which we do. So if we pipe that to format list, we see we've got PVS farm information. And now we have general security groups, licensing options and version. And if we look in uh, farm information, general security groups, etc. Okay, so now we have a object. What we want to do is output that object to a, a JSON file. All right. And if we have a look inside this JSON file, JSON is really good for storing hierarchical data. So now we have PVS farm information, general security groups licensing. We see the licensing and all the uh, information there. All right, excellent. So now we have a um, definitive file which shows us where we want our configuration to be. Um, <clears throat> so what can we do with this? Well, we, we can in fact run a pester test. And we can see that we have the pester test here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the content from that JSON file and load it in. And as soon as we've done that, we can now use pester to compare any data against what we have in the config file, the declarative, declarative config file. For instance, the first one is we'll make sure that the version is greater than or equal to the minimum version that uh, we've extracted from our, um, from our form. Now then, if we run this pester test, We can see that we're running the test. We're comparing it to all of the other uh, to the to the file. So what happens if we change something? So if somebody comes in and changes properties and say they've fat fingered this to four and they've enabled printer management, and that is absolutely what you don't want. You have not configured your uh, farm. You don't want your farm to look at that. What happens now if we run the pester test? It compares the data against the data in the config file and we can see we've now failed we were expected 64 but was 4 and printer management expected false but was true all right so what can we do with this we can we can look at other pods we can look at other um we can look at uh, other other parts of the pvs infrastructure we can make sure it is as we thought it should be something we can do as well so if we look at a couple more um, a couple more parameters to the invoke pester command we see we've added quiet and pass through and let's stick that in a variable now previously it was doing a right host to put that green and red stuff and now we've got a proper object back 
and we can say all right p dot fail failed count now it's two so we can do some interesting things now so we could schedule this and we can say well if we're going to fail more than uh, zero we can do something with that information right so let's see so for instance we can easily schedule the running of pester and then if you fail more than uh, zero tests you can say you send an email or raise an alert etc etc there's a hundred things you can do but it means that you can stop configuration drift you can stop upgrades resetting values that you don't know about and it will help to ensure that your configuration stays exactly as it's supposed to and um, thanks for uh, this listening to this short video on uh, pester and infrastructure testing